Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to continue some of our studies now on the beginning lessons and one of the things I want to paint right up over here. This is a painting I did a few years ago, ooh, three years ago, and it was a study of some of the prairie sunflowers that we have out here in uh, Nebraska. They all come out and they're not like a real big sunflower that you see, you know, that we actually grow out here in the farmlands, but they're only about this big around and right now they're out everywhere and uh, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you but we also want to concentrate on the color the hue of yellow and show you some different ways in which you can make warms and cools and how to vary yellow uh, because yellow is one of the most sensitive colors uh, to mixing so, and so as you're learning how to mix and find tones and teach your eye how to see these tones yellow is a really great one to do that so let's come down here I have my six palette again uh, just like I was um, you know, I've been using all along. I, as a matter of fact, I just transferred over and put out a little extra color. So we have a Hansa yellow, we have naphtha red light, we have our thalo blue, red, violet, black, and white. Okay, and again, these are the heritage acrylic colors, okay, so that I use for just everything I do. So I want to show you um, one of the most popular colors. Like you watch a lot of the channel here, you'll see I use a color like uh, this one right here, which is yellow oxide. I use it all the time in a lot of my painting. It is a good, very old traditional color. And again, just like everything we, we uh, you know, you can see right here the color index name there, the color name is PY42. And another popular color is uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is PY43. They're very similar in working properties. They're oxide pigments, which means they're, uh, the yellow oxide is a more opaque color, uh, and it's really great for old traditional techniques and especially great for all prima. But we don't have it here, so how do we make it? Well, this is again where you can use your chart here and help you. So here's PY74, which is the Hansa yellow, which we talked before. PY42 sits here. Okay, so what I have to do is drive this color this way. Okay, now how do I drive this color this way? A couple ways to do it. First off, you can do it with a black. You know, the black. So let's, let's just draw a line here for a second, okay? And so we know. So if I use the black, I draw a line between the black and the PY42 here, or between the 74 and the black. So between our Hansa yellow and our black, I will come just uh, uh, right about into here, okay, into that particular area right into here. And so what I have to do is I want to be able to uh, get rid of some of the green, basically, get rid of some of the green. So I'm not going to be able to make it with black exactly. I can come really close but I'm not going to be able to make it exactly. What about if we did blue, 15 and blue? And again, 15 and blue is going to take me right here, and so I can make it right in here, but it'd be a little bit green. And so what I might want to do is lift it up with a little bit of red to take it this way. Does that make sense? So I can do, I'll, sh I'll show you. You can do it with black. It won't be exactly the same. You can do it with blue. Blue and red might get you a little closer to it. Um, and then you add a little bit of white. But let's take a look. So here it is here. Here's our, um, our yellow oxide. A beautiful painting color that I will use. And you'll see I'll use haunts. Let me grab this. This is a photo. And I turned around and sold this painting. But it was, this is a painting I did and I sold it. But you can see I'll use a lot of the the uh, yellow oxide colors in and around in here, and then I'll go out to these brighter haunts of yellow. So we want to be able to make some of these tones uh, in this particular painting. Let me put that back up over here. And so what I'm going to do, let's just clean my knife here for a second. And one of the things that's really, really sensitive about yellows is yellows will react to the smallest, especially Hansa, to the smallest addition of uh, a color. So you got you to gotta remember that. But let's just take some of this, okay? And let's come over here and grab just the tiniest, start little bit of additions of the blue here into this color. Now it's going to go slightly greenish right? We know that's going to happen. Our chart's going to show us it's going to go slightly greenish. And then we have to lift the color back up towards the orange with some red into it. So we'll start lifting it back up here, get rid of the green, 
here and start lifting this back up here towards that yellow. And let's add just a touch more yellow. But you can see the green is starting to go away here, okay? And maybe a bit more red into that. See, it's still slightly greenish. Look for the tone and do it slowly so you don't waste a whole bunch of paint. Do it, look for the tone. Let's add a bit of white now because it's an oxide. So we'll add a touch of white here and just a touch more yellow. Now, I'm gonna add this yellow, but then you tell me when you look at this, what do you see? What do you see in the difference here between these two colors, okay? This one is still slightly greenish. That one's still slightly orange. Do you see that? So I need the tiniest bit more of the red in here, and I'll just slowly start to add the red back in until I can make this color. So you can see. So you can make that color, see? You can. And these are these little things that I do with you here. We'll get rid of that little bit of orange there. Maybe just a touch more yellow. So the white goes in because it's an oxide because it's a, a little bit opaque. But white is used to adjust the value, the lightness and darkness. Okay. And this chart you can see is, is really, really advantageous. So basically what we did is we mixed the blue into the yellow till we started to get to the green. And then we lifted it up towards where the yellow 42 was with this. So we made a green that's right about in here, a yellow green. And then we drew a line to take our color up towards that. So you can see the, uh, um, you know, th this uh, particular raw sienna, which is a PBR7 here, would have maybe a bit more blue to pull it in, maybe a touch of black. So, you know, you may go a little bit more red and a little bit of black to help pull it this way in towards the black. It's got to come in just a bit. So how would you make a sienna color? You probably would add or you would, I know I've made it many times, you would add a bit more black, which is gonna take it a little bit green, and then a bit more red here. And what you get is a darker, basically a brownish yellow color here, that is your raw sienna color. And so you, you know that, that's a beautiful color, and you'll see that color even in some of the tones, let's go back to our thing, our, our thing here. You'll see that color even in some of the tones here, especially into the back flowers back there and darker flowers that are back here. So a really good way to make these, these other tones of yellow is you can do it with yellow and black. Because I can make raw, I can make this yellow oxide pretty close. Because when I mix yellow and black, what do I get? I get a yellow green, right? That's our olive color that we've talked about in the last few lessons. So I can take the tiniest, and this is the thing, guys, just the, tini the tiniest bit of black and see how quickly that, that starts to go over, right? We'll probably need just a touch more. But you can see you get that yellowish green that's here, and then you kick it back up towards the oranges with a bit of your reds. And so I can start hitting some beautiful, almost uh, the same, this, it's a little bit green, so I need just a touch more uh, into this to start heading towards that yellow oxide. And then what also do I need? A tiny bit of white because it's an oxide. And so you can get these colors. now. When you're mixing, when you're, and so you can get that, I just need a little bit more black and a little bit more red and I'm there. You, when you're mixing, there's a bunch of different ways. You know, you're gonna go, when you look at this, you're gonna go to this area on the map. Are you gonna go this way, south and then north? Or are you gonna go in west a little bit and then in? There's a bunch of different ways. Can I get it with a red violet? Yes, I can get it with a red violet too. Now, what's the difference? Well, let me just take some of it because this is all good painting color. We can paint with this color. And what is that? That's just haunts of yellow, red, a little black, and a little white. And it makes a nice yellow oxide color. And if you want to keep it for a while, just add a little extender. Just reach in. Here's your little cap of extender. Just poke in a little bit, mix it up into that color, and that'll stay wet here for our entire painting here if we want to use it. But you can see, there's the tube of yellow oxide. Here's this one of the yellow oxide we just made. Now, why do you buy yellow oxide? 
simple. It's simple. It's quick. It's done for you. You know, it's a way that you can put out. It's like what I do with the Dave's favorites that I paint a lot on YouTube here with. I put out yellow oxide. I put out Darulide yellow. And I put out the uh, uh, Hansa yellow. And the Darulide yellow is a little bit tough of a one to make from Hansa yellow. You can get close, but never really that bright. But the yellow oxide, anything inside the wheel is very easy to make. And that's why you always see me grab colors as far out the wheel as I can, because I can always take it inside by making that tertiary color or adding the blacks and stuff like that. Anything from the inside that'll pull it. So PBR7 over here is uh, the burnt umber, raw umber. You'll see that those colors will pull it in there. Burnt sienna will pull it in. Burnt sienna and a little bit of blue will make a beautiful color there too. But what you're doing is you're learning how to drive that yellow. If you're going a little bit too green, then you may need a little bit of red to pull it up. Does that make sense? And that's how you drive your colors. Now, there's a way, so this is very warm. Why is it very warm? Because I have mostly a lot of red in there and it's very warm. But if I wanted to make a cooler one, so this is warm. If I wanted it cooler, I would use the blue again. Okay, a little bit of blue, drive it green. And that's probably a little too much. I tell you, it's that, you know, learning. And I haven't d done this kind of mix mix like this with the palette knife in a long time. So it's kind of practice for me. But then your cool color in all of this is this one. This is the coolest. So I'll make it to a green. I'll make it so I can grab a little bit of this red violet color that's in here. And what I'm going to start to do is this, I'm going to start to get rid of this green. Now, I've already got this color very, very cool, okay? And this is the kind of cool tone I like. I like my cool tones just a touch touch greenish let me pull over here though so I can show you the difference I like them a touch greenish but you can also make it here a touch red like I have on the sunflowers today okay so this is a touch green this is a touch red all of those would look really well really nice in the sunflower as a matter of fact as you see that color you can see that tone that's going to be the cooler tone that we use in and around where our shadows are that's the cool color tone, especially if I drop it on the photo there. Okay, that's the cool color tone. You may see some of that in the, some of the back areas of that. That's a cool color. This is a warm color. So, you know, this is a little darker. I could add a little bit of white to this to lighten it up here, okay? But overall, this one is cool, and this one over here that I made is warm here and so the cooler ones I use usually on the shadow side of something and the warmer ones I use to the highlight so if I want to make the shadow side of any of these yellows today I will add a touch of that red violet eliminating some of the naphtho red light the naphtho red light is your warm the red violet is your cool both of them are going to drive this going to drive the color from a red upwards this way I mean excuse me from a green upward that way and both will work okay so let's try some of this okay so we'll put our, a reference photo over let me just and we're not going to paint an entire huge painting of it but let's just have some fun here okay so I'm going to make a background here I'm going to take my bigger one inch brush and a little bit of water and on this other painting I did there, I made a gray. All kinds of great ways to make a gray. I'm just going to grab some of these colors here. Grab a, a bit of white and a bit of black and yellow. These make beautiful gray colors here. And you see, I like it slightly yellow, slightly warm. Let's add a bit more water to this. And I love to uh, take these colors here. Let's add a bit more light to this here. I'll make a lighter color. We'll splash some of this color around here onto our background. And you can cover the whole background if you want. Sometimes I add a little extender. This is just to cause the color to slide a little bit more. But I, I love the a la prima of color. In other words, I love the, the to leave empty spaces out through there. I really do. Now, I added um, a bit of the blues up here. Let's add just a bit this added a bit of the blues but I, instead of using a blue green because I'm going to use a lot of red instead of using a, a lot of this yellow instead of using a blue green which would be fine you could do that 
But one of the things I always use my background for is to contrast my flowers. And so I go to up to its complement. So I'm going to head more towards a blue-violet rather than a blue-green so that it gives my background contrast my flowers a little bit more. That's the way I like it. So I'll go to a blue to a blue-green here, I mean a blue-violet here, and I'll push some of that around. And that's how I did this other one is I pushed some blue-violet into it here. And we'll drop this around here. And again, I just love the olive print and the quick. And this is just this is just fun painting, you know. Have yourself some fun with it. Let's grab a little yellow with this. A little yellow in that color. And push that around up in through here. Just makes fun backgrounds. And so you can fill in the entire background if you want. Or you can do like I do is just push some colors around and make it very contemporary. On the sample that I did over there a couple years ago, I filled it in most of the way. Today, well, maybe not so. I'm just going to just... And so I like to take a little bit of blues. You know what I always talk about? Move color around. A little bit of those yellows, a little bit of those blues. Just kind of move that stuff around. So you get yourself kind of a real nice background there. And that's kind of the background I use here, except for this one is solid. And then we can come in and we can start painting our flowers. Now, most of these flowers that I paint, these are the prairie sunflowers. And most of them that I paint, I use a, a number 10. I usually use just one size of flat. And I like to stay back and I like to draw them. And then I end up painting the flower multiple times. Now... Here's the thing that you got. I used, I used a little extender in here, so this is going to stay wet for quite a while. And I, so I don't always like that. And especially if you're working with a yellow, you can ha yellows are very sensitive to other colors around, so you could have some trouble trying to build that up here. So you can let it dry, or you can do like I do, is I'm just going to, I'm going to put a, a, just a sunflower as an example right in here. And let's put this one right down here, okay, sunflowers right into these areas here. And I'll just take my paper towel and back off some of the color. That makes it easier for me to paint that that's this yellow into those areas. The yellow won't change so much because of the blue and everything else in there. And I usually do that, especially if I have yellows or I have too much paint. If your paint gets a little sticky or something, that's fine. But if it doesn't, then you usually have to add a little bit of paint. So this is the yellow, kind of the yellow oxide I made, which is the Hansa. And we take a little red. You can take a tiny bit of blue here and a bit of white, a little bit more red right into here. So, And I love to just vary that color. So this is kind of the yellow oxide color we have here. And I'm just going to pull in and out like this, in and out to kind of set the first motion of this particular sunflower. I'm not painting the petals yet. I'm just kind of basing it in, seeing the size, painting it. Now, a lot of times I like to do this. I just take my finger and I move in and out. What I'm doing, what you do is you move in and out like this and always look for you beginners, always do this. This, what I paint for, and you'll see me in a lot of videos, what I paint for is movement. I don't paint the petals yet. I'm painting the, the perceived movement. Remember we talked about with the birds and feathers follow, doing contour following strokes. Well, I'm, follow, con, I'm going around like this, just like a clock, in and out of the clock here, to set the movement of the petals, the size and the movement of the petals. And let's set this one up over here. We'll have this one. We're going to set it back. Now, to make this one turn here, you will see smaller petals. Uh, let me just move this up a little higher here so it's not in the way. So to make this one turn, you'll see shorter petals here, longer petals here. That causes it to turn. So, And we'll do shorter petals here and then longer petals on this side. And that causes this flower to turn down. Okay. So, and I'll push in and out a little bit, and I'll set that flower in there. Now, so that's basically if I wanted to paint that one into that one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some of the darker color that you see inside. So I'm going to take a little red and a little black. You could also use blue, but see, I get this. 
It's a warm color, but it's a more of a brownish red. That's our brown color. And I'll use that in a few areas here, right around that center. And I do this. I Okay, I'll pick up some color here. I'm just going to tap this through and not make a perfect circle. You don't want a perfect circle. Go out into your petals a little bit and, and don't make a perfect circle. Then you can increase the movement in and out just by pulling that color in and out of that, out of that, uh, so it's not a circle, so you don't perceive a circle. Pull it in and out of the movement you're establishing into your petals here. Just pulling that out. Now you can do that with a brush as well. Let's change that color. Maybe a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of the, the uh, red violet. Nice cool color. So this would go down further onto the cool side. That might be just a touch dark. So I'll grab a little bit of red, vi I mean the, the red violet still here. Push that around a little bit. Concentrate, I'll leave that contrast. That's kind of nice. You know, I've changed a lot since I painted that thing three years ago. I like more contrast now than what I did back then. So I'll leave a little bit more in there. So, so I have a cool side that's a little darker and then I'm going to have a light side and we'll build on that. And then, so I have some of the shadows. Now, let's just take some of this color. It's good color here. Let's just add that to some yellow. So this is the cooler center. Let's add that to the yellow that we have here. Maybe even just a touch of our brown. Makes a nice, and we can pull some shadow strokes out here now. And this is nice and cool. And this will be the shadow side of this little guy here, okay? Maybe some of these pull up and around here. You can push, I'll push the shadow down here on this side a little bit more. You can see on that one that I did up there, I even let it go a little green. I love to, you know, when, if you're an advanced painter, you'll let it go between the violets and the greens. Yellow greens are beautiful colors, especially on younger flowers. So now I'll put some of that, that uh, cooler color in there. Maybe a bit right in here so that this little turned one will come up. We'll paint it. I know I have it over there on this one on top, but maybe we'll paint this other one on top this time. Okay. Now, let's vary the color a little bit. And this is very, very important, guys. Don't, I mean, what makes a beautiful painting from an exquisite painting is the way in which you use color, okay? And if you say, oh, okay, that's enough, you know, maybe that looks good enough. Yeah, it's a beautiful painting. If it's an exquisite painting, you'll the, the viewer will perceive other tones, other colors in there. And so I have a lot of the cools. What I don't have is a lot of the warms. So let's just take some of our warm red and let's take some of our yellow. We'll get up here towards our oranges, some warm tones. Let's get some of those warm tones in there. See how pretty that is? A little bit of the warm tone coming in there. And you can, and this is the thing, and you know, how much time, what makes the difference in, you know, for me is it, in painting. I'm a professional artist and it's how much time I take in putting on a tone is the cost of the painting, basically, okay? So if, if I'm painting this and I want to really go up in price, I would then switch over, maybe grab some brown and some red and touch some of those reds right up in here too as another little way of expressing yet another tone in there. And on this one, you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of that and stuff in there. So so now you're seeing the shadows, you're seeing some warms, you're seeing some cools. Now we can come in, let's just take our Hansa, I'll leave that warm in my brush, the Hansa, a little bit of white, and some of this will step up. We won't go completely white up here. We're going to step up in value there to about an eight or so. Okay, so just a little bit of white into here. And let's pull a petal down this time in. Maybe one or two here, petals. And then I'm just going to use the brush on the corners and stuff here to whisper that just a bit. Now, that's a heavier petal there. Now what I'm going to do is push it in and out here a bit here to create that movement in and out of that petal. Now, so I'll leave some of that, okay? I'll leave some of that right in there, but 
that's that's pretty good for right now. Now, I don't want to use this too much, so maybe I'll go grab some more of my yellow oxide. We'll drop the value down, lift the pressure on your brush, and just lightly push in some more petals here. Push in and out, but not as light. You might even add a little bit of extender here. We're heading towards our shadow, so we don't want to do too much. Light pressure on your brush. Just hit a couple of little bits here to give maybe the idea of a petal there but without putting too much on okay and so you want more right in here because that's where your light is light's going to come up from here we're going to bring light from the top up here let's do the same thing now let's maybe a little extender in my brush i just love how it slides i'm here we'll grab a little more yellow oxide a little bit of our light colors in here whites here, a little bit of the, not yellow oxide, a little bit of the Hansa, maybe a little bit of that yellow oxide. Let's put the lighter petal here up on top. So this one's going to come up on top. I'll be a little bit careful drawing it here, just like that. We're going to put that flower today on top. And so I'll pick up some more paint. We'll pull in. Now as I come this way, I'll just lift the pressure, just kind of lightly drag and let that color fade off here. So, and it can get the longer petals for the, for the, the turning of that flower. But uh, I don't make them perfect. And then I'm going to pull out some of that shadow. You can do this with a brush too, but I just love touching my paintings. Since it's non-toxic acrylics, it's fine to do that. So now I've, I've started to build my flowers there, do you see? And so what you're doing when you're touching this is you're, you're touching... You're, you're starting on the light, putting down the heavy stroke on the light, letting the color lift the pressure on your brush, get way back on your handle of your brush, and let it just whisper and fade away there as you're going around, okay? Don't go in there and paint too much. Don't try to, you know, this petal is not real big. It's, I mean, it's a little too wide. I'll take care of it the next time. I'm looking for just the beginning shapes of the flower. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on there yet because I'm not there, I'm not at that stage of the painting. So what I do now is I'm gonna add a little extender here and maybe a little bit more to the warm side here, or yellowy brown, more to the warm side. I'm gonna restate some of my shadow that might have gotten lost in just a few areas here. So whenever I paint, and that's not quite dark enough for that downside, so let's go a little bit more red violet, maybe a touch of black. That gives us a real dark, cool color. Maybe a little bit of red. Again, I like to, you know, I'm gonna go darker here, but I love to change the tone a little bit, but it's cooler. Let's get that in there. Yeah, that's pretty color. A little cooler, a little violet in there. Let's get that real dark that I really like that in there. Let's add a touch of that down in here. Okay, just tap the corner of your brush, make some marks, push it in and out a bit. Now you've reset your shadows again, the contrast of your shadows. And all I do now is I go back and I reset my petals again. I work my petals. Sometimes I'll give my brush a good rinse before I do that. Now, what I'm going to do here is let's just show you the difference. So I've painted this one up through here. And those of you that are in the... Um, that are in the memberships and stuff. I'll put a full size color photo of that one in the memberships too that you can use that to, to uh, paint with, okay? And so you can uh, follow along and paint that painting if you'd like. But let's go into the outside here. I use some violets. So I, I, I use blue violets and red violets here. So this is the color. And I use it basically for contrast. I'm gonna lighten this up. I take a little thalo blue and a little bit of the red violet and then some white and I'm just going to come in here and show you here and I'll just push this around. We'll, we'll paint very casual but look at the contrast that the violets start to add. Let's grab a little bit of the red violet to this here and I, this is where I love to paint red violets, blue violets, try some different things here push the colors around a bit. Don't worry about getting into your flowers or anything like that here. 
just you're, you're painting for contrast of what this contrast is going to be or what this contrast could be. Maybe some yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of black. Make yourself some nice uh, greens here. Let's go a touch more black maybe right in here. And so I'll push maybe some green colors in here that I'll have. Okay, this is just ideas for you to try. And you need to get some of these colors on so your eye can see them. That's the big thing, guys. Your eyes just got to see the color. And, what you know, we can turn these into blossoms and stuff like that. But I want to see the colors here. And usually what I like to do, let's take just a bit more black, maybe a bit of the brown, maybe a touch of extender. I like how it slides. And this is what I use to put on stems and stuff like that. If I was coming out here to do some of those fun things out through here. and uh, But you can see all different kinds of ways. But So you can see what the violets start to do. And, and you know, I control contrast here. I control contrast by just how much of that dark, because we've got a lot of light colors there, how much of that dark violet I'm going to let go through. So maybe some more red violet, tiny bit of blue here. Get some more of this. I'd like to vary those violets and stuff here. And, you know, so I might let just a few more little touches of the violet. And, of course, we can put the, lot, the lighter ones and paint some uh, little flowers and stuff like that. But... I love these kind of touches and that a la prima kind of look to that. But you can see immediately I start to do that, then I start to get more contrast. Now, in all of the videos that we've learned so far, I've just created this violet. What have I told you that we need to do when we create that color? When you create a color, you move the color. So in a lot of things, I always say express the color, then accent the color. So what I'll do is I'll take my... I'll add a little extender here so it's not quite so powerful, okay? And I'll accent that color. I'll show it up into a few other areas. And I like to show it up sometimes right into the, I'll uh, thin it way out and maybe add just a touch of yellow to it so it changes quite a bit, you know, even slightly green. And I'll let that tone show up into some of the, uh, and especially if I've got a large composition of, the sunflowers or something like that. I'll let that tone show up in there. Let's take, whoops, grab some of that. And let's use this one. But I'll let that sh that tone just show up there. Let's put a smaller one right out here. Okay, and so you control that, but whenever you take and you uh, are making you are making a flower here and you're putting the violets out, you should always look to carry that tone. So I might touch a little bit of that violet right into here. So that violet carries into that flower and that harmonizes that flower. So right out in here would be a real good spot for some more of that violet, especially if I want to get that contrast in there. That would be a good spot for that violet. So your eye would pick up that violet traveling through. It's called harmony. Okay, it's called harmony. Put that in there. So let's just take a little bit more yellow, maybe a tiny bit of white here with this, and quickly, quickly draw in some of these into this one. And sometimes I'll pull out to get a different look. Just like that, we'll start to set the shape of this one. Maybe a bit more light. Now sometimes I'll pick it up See that little bit I put on the corner there? So what I do is I come in and I'll just grab a little corner of that onto my brush. And I can use that. I don't really need that right here. But see, I can use that. To, for those of you that have problems making your petals show up, I can use that to draw the edge of the petal a bit. Or I can blur it off slightly if I don't need that much definition, especially on a, on a back one like this. I don't need that much. Let's just put in a couple small ones here for the turning of that little blossom or this little this little prairie sunflower there. And maybe a bit more of a red-violet kind of touch into that center there. That's kind of pretty right in there like that. Okay, so 
Now, what I'm going to do is wipe that. If, if I have a lot of violet, sometimes I'll clean my brush because that can really contaminate the yellow, which, you know, which moves with those colors really easy. I'm going to take some Hansa, a little bit of the warm colors here, up to this little bit of the red, bit of the black, bit of the white here. So it's a, little, a touch lighter. Let's come back in and let's set... Yeah, that'll be good. I don't want to go as light as I'm going to go yet, but I'm just going to touch and lift off here some of this, the sunflower itself. And sometimes I'll just take the edges off so the edges of the petals look a bit transparent. So we'll just create a little bit of movement. Sometimes I'll pull out here like this and maybe pull out one that's right in there like that. So you get a, a bit, of, I like the flower to start being relaxed. In other words, when I mean by relaxed, what do you mean by relaxed, Dave? What I mean is, <laughs> what I like to do is, I don't, I, what happens is, and especially with you beginners, and it happens with me too because I'm a left brain painter, is that I'll tend to paint the same petal over and over and over again. But what I mean by relaxing is, I will come inside or outside of the last petal and put on some more color so that really the petal edges start to blur a little bit. So I don't follow and push down to cover the same stroke. I use it a little bit different. So here I'm turning the brush. Remember this one was too big. So I'll turn the brush and only put a little bit of light on one side here. And then some of these out here I might just whisper out like this here. And you know we'll let these really soften out here. Maybe I'll pull one in right in here a little bit straighter and then I'll just let those whisper out there like that. So I'm in control of that flower. Now let's lighten it up. Okay, maybe a bit of extender. Sometimes I like that extender because it causes the paint to slide and what I'm going to be doing is just touching and lifting, touching it and lifting it off here so I make a little bit different petal. Now that's a little far in, so I'm just going to push that to take some of that off. But I like that kind of an edge there. And But I control that by how I'm stroking this flower here. So sometimes I'll just push it like that, you see, and leave just a little bit of it. So I might, you know, come in here like this, and this is where you get all the interest to the petal. So I might stroke it like that and then take some of it right back off again. So I leave the movement. And so I paint, when I'm painting really casual flowers, I paint movement, and you hear me that say that in so many times. When I paint really casual flowers, I paint movement more than I paint the petal. Okay? So relax on those petals. Relax. Have some fun with them, but relax them and let the, the movement of that flower come out, okay? So I'll, I'll start the stroke and then I'll take a lot of it off here. And I'll leave a little edge if I want that petal to come up a bit more or something. But I like the, the pushing and the pulling in and out of those petals to really give them some nice definition. And the, the thing is about painting casual flowers like this, the, the, these prairie sunflowers, you'll paint them a little different every day, especially as you're beginning. You'll start to paint them a little different and a little different every day. Now let's put some down on that shadow side, some of my cool color here. Let's push some more of that right down in here. Lengthen the petals right in there like that. So you can see them starting to build a little bit more. You could come in and add even more up in there sometimes. I'll take some of this cool color and just push it out there on the edge and just push like this. So I make the edge of that flower start to disappear. And that's a beautiful thing too. So I could use some of that right in there and just push a little bit and soften that out. Now, you, you know, you if you wanted to really disappear, you could add a little water to it so that it, the solvent would eat through it. So there's all kinds of ways. Let's put a little brighter yellow one right up here. A little bit more yellow so it pops off a bit more right on that side there. 
that's kind of pretty. It gives a good look to it. Now, so one of the things I didn't do on these, which I could do, and I'll show you here, is I'll then take like a, the red violet, some white, some of my blue, make a lighter value that is up by the value of the yellow, and this will increase the yellow into the painting here, or excuse me, the violet. And so you could touch a little bit of violet. It's a pretty little color, see? You could touch some of that violet into your flowers there and take the violet that you would do smaller petals, little uh, blossoms out here. You can take that into your, the centers of yours here or around here. And see, it just adds another, a little different than what I have there. So you can see both and you can decide what it is you like to do. And, you know, as a production artist, a selling artist, what I do is like, that's really cool, but that one's really cool too. So I'll pay them both. <laughs> I'll do both looks. And then I see which one sells first. Let's take a bit of that red right in there. That's kind of that red violet. That's kind of pretty right in there. With that, that's kind of a pretty little note, little color note there. Maybe some of that right in here. Right like that. Okay. There we go. Some of that right in there. And then as I come out through here, some of the yellows, I you can do them brighter, you can do them softer. I'll do them a little brighter this time. I'll take a little Hansa yellow right on the corner of my brush. Just kind of tap that around. Lift the pressure sometimes. I use the opposite end of the brush that doesn't have the color on it and start tapping that around. So I just kind of roll and push the until I get a nice center in there. You could come back with a little more white if you wanted even more contrast. Let's push the light up onto the top side this time. I turned my brush over so I'm using the softer end of the brush just to soften that just a bit there makes a pretty little flower okay and right in here let's put a bit so you can see it's a good lesson here just real quick little flowers good lesson for working with the yellows let's lighten that one up just a bit little extender that thins the color and see I have a little violet in there which is toning it just a touch. See how it grays it? That's another beautiful way to gray your yellows. Try some of these different things. So here my yellow is a little softer, a little grayer back there. Pushing back a bit. Let's just push in and out. It creates that softer little edge. And you can create some light. Let's take a little violet, a little bit of blue here. Just a bit of blue. Here, vary this color. See, I'll, I'll kind of model this up so the color, I don't mix it all up too much. Model it so it's all a little different. And you can use this to start building some little petals here. Little flowers. Start some of the little ideas of flowers and stuff out here. Let's add some more white. We're slowly going to get lighter here. Add a bit more light, and as I put these lighter ones on, I won't paint the entire flower. Only what I need until I start to see a flower. Now, I like that red violet coming in there, so I'm going to lift out some of that red violet with some of that le red violet. What I mean by lift out is I just lift off that, that lighter color with a little red violet there. And let's just reset that petal. Maybe a little bit more. You only need three or four little petals here to start to say that's a little blossom. You don't need to paint all five or six petals of the blossom. You only need a few here to say that's a little blossom here. Okay. Maybe a couple over here. Here. Just to give you the idea of little blossoms. And again, some of these violets would look real pretty in here as well. Here. Some soft little guys right out here dropping down. You could uh, do a few more little greens. 
So let's get a little blue, a little green if you want it cooler. Let's say you wanted this cooler, toned and cooler. Would you add red or would you add red violet? Here I'll give you a hint, red violet. <laughs> so you could have this little greens here, some various little greens, just pull with this little strokes. And it looks easy when I do it because I have a lot of confidence. When you're a young artist, those are hard. I always found them hard until I got some confidence in my strokes of what I can do. I always found making marks like that really hard. You can pull out, get some different looks to it, okay? Um, you can use what I call negative painting. In, in right it like right into here to help separate and draw out some of the shapes of the let's say you're a little wild on some of your uh, blossoms so you can bring some of the shapes back in or paint back and forth there you know touch in a few of those little colors up on that one up in the corner I touched in like in here you can see I touched in a lot of the violets and other little tones everywhere and stuff but there, it's really a, a, a fun, fun little design or a fun little way. And, you know, you can go out and get yourself all kinds. And you can find these. Just put out. You can get yourself all kinds of ideas. And, you know, for prairie sunflowers. And you can set them up to turn and go any way you want. But they're a fantastic when you're working a little guy like this. They're a fantastic way to practice your yellow tones and the yellow tones are the ones that uh, are so so very important to uh, learning how to handle those yellows do you drive it cool red violet do you drive it warm with the naphtha red light do you driving it green with blue and then up with the naphtha red light are you driving it with yellow and then up how do you making all of those different tones and stuff you know so I can come in here, add a little bit more contrast if I want it. You know, those of you that want, let me just show you if you want more contrast. Now see that green's in my brush. I can help neutralize some of that with a little bit of red and, and some of those other colors. Or you give it a good rinse, but boy, any of that in there will affect, especially if you want to go pure bright color, any of those other tones in there will really affect it. Let's just add a little bit of warmth here. So white and a little bit of our tone reds and stuff here. And so I could come back just like one more time and let's just, let's get a little more pow, a little bit more Hansa yellow into that and really pump up. Now this is up to you, what, you know, if you do this or not, it's your flowers. You know, do you want to see that yellow, you know, really pop up yellow Maybe a bit of white, just hit the edges of it there. Don't paint the whole thing, just hit the edges and stuff of it. And decide if you want to drive even more contrast in it. That's all up to you and how much you want to do. But it's a, a great way to practice it. Now look at your yellows and stuff here, okay? And so all of those yellows are really coming from these colors right here. Everything that you have. And you can see in there, you can see the yellow oxide tone. So is yellow oxide a color that you, you know, you really need? No, you can make it, especially it's an oxide. It's inside the wheel. I put it out with, and I use it so many times because it's a shortcut, okay? But I, as an artist, this is the most important thing, guys. I, as an artist, know what makes yellow oxide. So I know... I know even if I'd make the shortcut, if I decide, okay, I'm going to buy yellow oxide now, I can, I know I can cool it really quick and I can kill that with just a bit of green to get it back towards its brown. So I can cool it down and make a raw sienna really quick, okay? Um, I know how to drive it. Does that make sense? So I know here on the wheel where that yellow oxide sits. And so if I buy it, I still know how to drive it. But one thing yellow oxide can't do is make Hansa yellow. It's impossible. It's impossible to take the color outside the wheel unless you have a color that's already that bright. And that's why when you start with a limited palette, you start with very bright colors because you can always work into the wheel, but you can't work out of the wheel, okay? So there you go. That'll help you just 
practice around, have some fun. You can put some light colors like you see in here. I did some lighter greens and stuff like that in there, but you can uh, practice those flowers and have some fun. And when I started, the, you know, started painting prairie sunflowers, I did hundreds of them until I really learned how to control them. And now they're very casual and I can paint them really easy. But they weren't easy when I first started because they looked stiff and everything. And stiffness comes from working the same stroke over and over and over again. So if they're stiff, Back the petals back out. Take some of that shadow from the center. Back it back out. Come back in and try to use a slightly different stroke than you did before. Okay? There you guys go. And uh, so the next one here we're going to do, we're going to go back. I got to do a western horse with you. I got a horse and rider that I want to do with a limited palette and get you to paint basically down into the browns and the siennas and down in some of the greens and stuff. So we'll talk about that one this next time before we go back to landscapes and everything. Okay? Alrighty, guys. Give them a try. Have a bunch of fun. And I'll see you on the next one.